Naomi Judd, right? Grammy-winning singer, songwriter, half of the Judds with daughter Winona, mother of famous actress Ashley Judd. But you may not have known about her secret battle with depression that drove this woman who seemed to have it all to ultimately want to take her own life. She tells that story in her book, River of Time, My Descent into Depression and How I Emerged with Hope. Please welcome Naomi Judd. <laughs> they are 100% your people. I love people. So this, I think, is a very brave thing for you to do because people don't talk about mental illness still in this country. Still, mm -hmm. it has a stigma attached to it mm -hmm. that doesn't belong. And I know you say you want people to know that mental illness is a disease. It is not a character flaw. No. Nope. When we saw you up on the stage all those years with Winona, rocking it out, bringing us so much joy, we didn't know that there was this secret. We didn't know that you were harboring this. When did it become clear to you that you had depression and it was severe? After our last tour, I knew that all during my life, there were periods where I would get so sad and everybody in the family, my neighbors and friends would say, you're so empathic. You care so much about other people. You pick up their stuff and I do. And my psychologist, Ted Klontz, said that I'm one of the most compassionate, empathic people that he's ever worked with. So I just attributed it to that. But when I came home off the tour, I went into this deep, dark, absolutely terrifying hole, and I couldn't get out. I, was, I spent two years on my couch. I know you write in the book about this bridge. Is it, Na mm -hmm. is it Natchez Tra Trace Parkway Bridge? Yep. And you had that in your mind as the place you wanted to end your own life. It's about 20 minutes from the farm. And it's hard to describe. I mean, when you all saw me, I was a whirling dervish. Um, wits and glitz, glamour and clamor, flash and flare with mm, spunk despair. <laughs> I mean, this picture right there where I'm wearing red vinyl, looks like I, looks like I took it off the seat of a, a 57 Chevy. <laughs> <laughs> that was me. I was jumping off risers in a different city every night performing. But I got so bad, there's, there's actually no words for it. My psychiatrist, who's one of the top, top psychiatrists in the country, Dr. Gerald Rosenbaum, said I have severe, not mild or moderate, severe treatment resistant. And they tried everything on me, every drug there was, even ECT, electroconvulsive shock therapy, they put you to sleep and shock you into a grand mal seizure, trying to jumpstart your chemicals, depression and anxiety. So severe treatment resistant, depression and anxiety. But now I, I travel the world, or not the world, I travel the country doing motivational speaking and trying to tell people, as you said, Megan, it's not a character flaw, it's a stinking disease. Mm -hmm. You have been through so much in your life and the book goes into all of it, sexually abused as a child, teenage pregnancy, ab abandoned by the birth father, single motherhood, poverty, welfare. You were raped and beaten by an ex-con who stalked you. When I was 22. Did those things contribute, do you think, to the depression? Or do you think this was something you had from birth, you know, a chemical uh, imbalance? We know now, and I study genetics and epigenetics, and I study the brain. I was just down at the Lieber Institute with Dr. Dan Weinberger, who's one of the world's experts on genetics. And then I was at um, Hudson Alpha, Huntsville, Alabama, with Richard um, Meyer. And I had my genetics studied because I have such bad genetics in my family on both sides. I mean, like serious pathological genetics. Read the book. It's scary. So I learned that so much of mental illness goes back to your genetics. That's why I'm studying it right now to figure out how I can alter the expression of them. But when I started writing the book, I thought, you know, people are gonna think I'm making this up. Because uh, like at 22, I was living in West Hollywood. I didn't have a car. 
If you can believe that, I had to go everywhere on the city bus, take Ashley to the doctor with 100 feet three temperature on the city bus. I was working for a guy that asked me to go to a golf tournament with him. As I was standing looking at all the pictures of his family, I said, nope, he fired me. I had to go on welfare. I was a paycheck away from the streets. I was terrified, literally just scared to death. And then this guy shot up heroin in front of me, an ex-con, and he beat me and raped me. And I was so terrified because the sheriff said they couldn't find him and he would definitely kill me. He was going to stalk me and kill me. So I moved the kids back to Kentucky to a mountaintop where I'm from. And we lived for a year without a TV or a telephone. Uh -huh. Can you, you know, believe that? What's incredible is you, so your daughter, your other daughter, Ashley Judd, many years after that, would find herself uh, on the receiving end of attempted sexual abuse mm -hmm. and harassment, she says, at the hands of Harvey Weinstein. And we're going to talk to Naomi about that right after this break. And Ashley Judd has been at the center of the so-called Me Too movement that we're seeing in this country right now, accusing Harvey Weinstein. And she led, she led on that in a way that, that mattered. Did, you, did she tell you about the Harvey Weinstein incident at the time it happened? Ashley and I are extremely close. She actually lives on an adjacent farm. I knew everything about the incident. And then <clears throat> she came over, I guess it's been about seven weeks ago. She came in the back door, barefoot as always, hadn't brushed her hair. And I knew that look on her face. She'd been out in the woods by herself. And I thought, okay, something's going on. And she said, the New York Times, um, I think I'll go to them and do an article about what happened to me. At first I was like, whoa, you'll never work again in Hollywood. <laughs> whoa, I didn't say that. No, but at the time, nobody thought that Harvey Weinstein was going down. And nope. keep in mind, her incident with Harvey was in a hotel room. He lured her in there, the old, come up to the room, not the hotel lobby. And then the next thing you know, he's asking her to watch him shower, which was one of his things, allegedly. Uh, she did not, she got out of there. And she talked about how she felt shame for years about the incident, she blamed herself. And now looking back, she, she feels empowered at how she got herself out. She was clever, she was smart in her responses and, and removed herself from danger. How was she in, in the moment it happened, like in your, in your memory, and how is she now about it? I knew about it the minute it happened, right five minutes after it happened. And I think the, the word, first word was confused. She was angry. She was scared to death. I mean, when that happens to you, he was in his bathrobe at eight o'clock in the morning when he showed up. And then one of the things she said right away was, you know, mom, she calls me mama, mama, his assistants and his staff has to know what's going on. That was one of the first tip offs that she had. And now all this time later, I mean, it's not, hasn't been that long, but so many other, now the accusers of Harvey are over 90 and not to mention all the other men. How is she feeling now? Oh, she's like, bring it on. Yes. And so are we all. Listen, courage obviously runs in your family. I know you've done a lot of great work. With, with the name of the group is the Mental Alliance. NAMI, it's the National Alliance for the Mentally Ill. Yeah. Go to my website and check it out. I just did the keynote for down in Washington, D.C. We had 20,000, 2,000 people show up. And we need more so attention I on this issue. So I speak all across the country. Have me come to your town. Thank you. Thank you so much for telling your story. And Naomi's book is called River of Time. Hello today, fans. Thanks for checking out our YouTube channel. Subscribe by clicking that button down there and click on any of the videos over here to watch the latest interviews, show highlights, and digital exclusives.